But welcome to this video. Today we're going to prove these two theorems. These two theorems are from uh, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin, and these have to do with a series of complex numbers. So the first theorem says that if we have a complex series that is equal to um, A, so converges to A, and the complex series B sub N that converges to B, then if I take the, the sum of these two series, then I get A plus B. Okay, so that's the first theorem we'll prove. And then the, thec the second theorem uh, says that um, if you have a series that converges absolutely, then the series converges. So um, if you remember what converges absolutely mean, it means that the absolute value of the series converges. And this makes sense, I think, because you know the absolute values will be larger <clears throat> or equal to at least the um, so you know you have the absolute the absolute values, and in this sense, it's like the uh, the complex norm, so to speak. Um, they're all positive. If that thing converges, it's larger than the um, the series that includes all of the positive and negative terms, then of course, since it's it's larger, it converges, the smaller one converges, the possibly smaller one, I could say that. So, so actually, <clears throat> this is sort of like a um, comparison test in a way, but we're gonna prove it uh, just by using the Cauchy criteria. All right, so let's start with the first one. Um, here is my proof. So I'm going to let, um, so I'm just, first I'm just gonna let A sub N be the um, series, be the partial sum of the series from uh, K equals zero to N of my A sub K. And I will let uh, B sub N be the same thing for B. So K equals zero to N and that's uh, B sub K. Now the partial sums, I can add these together, right? So um, so then A sub N plus B sub N, well, this is equal to the sum of these two partial sums, right? So A sub K plus B sub K. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is write down uh, what this, what the limit of the partial sum equals. So then I have, that the limit as n goes to infinity for a sub n has to be equal to a since the partial sum converges to a and you know there's the theorem that says if the partial sum converges the sum converges right um, and likewise the limit as uh, oops the limit as n goes to infinity for uh, B sub n is also B. Okay, and so then very um, nicely by properties of limits, uh, we can then put this together and say, well, so so we can say that the limit. Uh, I need a I need a word here to transition between these two ideas. Okay, so then. This one equals this one, and that equals that. And so, and I'll just write this. And so, by the properties of limits, or we should write limit properties, yeah. By limit properties, limit properties are so nice, you know. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus b sub n, well, isn't that just equal to a plus b, right? So then the series of partial sums, right? Then the series of partial sums of a sub n plus b sub n um, for these, these uh, this sum of these two series from k equals zero to n, a sub k plus b sub k, this is going to converge to a and b, to a plus b, converges to um, a plus b. And 
since the partial uh, partial sum converges, the series converges. So we can say this: the series um, um, n equals zero to infinity of a sub n plus b sub n converges to a plus b. And that's it. Okay, so that is the first theorem and the first proof. Now we're going to go on to prove this theorem here that says if we have a series that's absolutely convergent, then the series is convergent. So uh, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so this is kind of a short proof, but there's actually a lot of information here. So let's take a look at it. So here's my proof. Suppose I've got this complex series that converges. Okay. I've got a complex series that converges um, and it converges absolutely. Right. Uh, we need to let epsilon greater than zero be given. And now we're going to um, we're going to invoke <laughs> invoke the Cauchy criterion um, since the series A sub n converges absolutely absolutely then then we're going to say that the the Cauchy criterion will uh, apply to the absolute. Mm, absolute uh, value of the series then by the Cauchy criterion. So what does the Cauchy criterion say? It says that there exists a natural number in capital N such that, so that where the capital N is like some index in my series, um, such that for, for all, little n greater than or equal to little m greater than or equal to capital N, we have that um, the, now here's where we're going to um, apply this theorem directly to the absolute values because um, we're gonna write it like this. So the Cauchy criterion in this situation, we're gonna say for um, k equals m up to n, of a sub k, but we're gonna write the absolute value of the a sub k is right. Okay, so the Cauchy criterion um, is applied to the absolute uh, values of the series. Okay, but this is equal to, well, um, it's just equal to this guy, since this is, um, this is positive and this whole thing is positive then this is equal to this, right? Which is less than epsilon by the Cauchy criterion. Okay, so then what we can say is this, thus for all n greater than or equal to m greater than or equal to capital N, we have that the, the series from k equals m to n a sub k well, this one has to be less than or equal to, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning. This one has to be less than or equal to this one, right? Because all of these terms are necessarily positive and these ones are not necessarily positive, right? So it definitely has to be at most equal to and, um, and then it could be less than, right? And the Cauchy criterion says that this guy right here is less than epsilon. And since this, you know, okay, so I don't have to tell you what we, <laughs> what happened, right? I've got, um, oops, I've got uh, this guy is less than this one, which is less than this one. So obviously I can write this down. If it's not obvious, I apologize. All right, and now we're finished, right? So we can say, so 
by the Cauchy criterion, which is like this amazing observation theorem by the Cauchy criterion. I guess it's more of an amazing behavior of series and uh, sequences by the Cauchy criterion. Um, the series. So this is the one that we started off with saying it converged absolutely. Now we're saying it converges. So you could, uh, in calculus, they call it the absolute convergence, conditional convergence, and then just uh, convergence. So um, this one converges unconditionally. We're all uh, absolutely, if it converges absolutely, then it converges. So it, think about it, it makes sense. It comes down to this right here. If the um, absolute values, the sum of the absolute values converge, so if they're less than epsilon, i.e. they converge after that, after that number, big N, um, if after this, after this index, so after a big N, my, uh, my points, a sub n minus a sub m, why do I write m sub m? These all start to, to become uh, less than epsilon. If these are all positive, then some of these ones, which are, are maybe not positive, um, they're smaller than the one that's bigger, and the, the one that's bigger is converging. So necessarily, the smaller one also has to converge. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful. Um, like, subscribe, maybe. Up to you. Okay. Thanks. Bye.